Hello, it's Daz. This week's discussion is about the potential collective effort of those who are in higher positions to feed off the youth. We've heard before that our phones, tablets, television are black mirrors emitting blue light, similar to a black scrying mirror. Social media is a medium that connects people across the world. A lot of bonds, relationships are formed through the internet today. It can be a very constructive or destructive thing. People have formed soul ties, connections with people they may never meet or who don't even know they exist. Or someone you don't know exists could be watching and focusing on you. People post their triumphs, their best moments in life, graduations, anniversaries, marriages, engagements, as well as their lower points in life, suicide attempts, depression, the death of a family member, a divorce, the death of a loved one. People may see your post and pray for you, root for you, wish the best, or they might look at your post and be filled with spite, jealousy, or insecurities. They may decide to put you down and wish the worst on you, or show your post to others and gossip about you. As you know from the video I did back in 2017, sign someone and text you and how to end it, the take I took on a hex wasn't just your traditional paranormal activity, but that there's all kinds of people that can hex someone. I believe a lot of people are involved in the occult without even realizing it because it's deeper than just a few incantations, a few rituals. It can even be through thought form. Energy vampires also can flock to one's social media. And this is why energy vampires usually in person will latch to their targets, but sometimes they do so through other mediums. As we know, youth and beauty is a commodity in today's world. You often hear 40 or 50 is the new 20 or 30, and it seems like rather than people growing up, they are adulting and they are trying to stay children as long as possible. I just turned 26 years old last Monday, on the 28th of last month, and it's hard to believe, having started this channel when I was only 19, that so much time has flown by. But I can remember thinking when I was, you know, below 18, 18's an adult, you get 18, it's 21, then you get 21 and it's 25. I'm heading towards 30 and, you know, we have 30 year olds out there that don't even act like real adults. And you have 50 year olds, 40 year olds dressing like they're still in their 20s, wanting to go out and party and live their best lives like they're still in their 20s. Grandparents doing this sort of thing. It's a different world that we live in today in 2020. One thing I've noted is that in celebrity culture, a lot of uh, the Gen X and baby boomer celebrities, they aren't going anywhere. And I'm not saying, you know, with ageism, people should have to end their career because they age out. But when I think about like in R&B or hip hop, where there's Beyonce and Jay-Z who are a power couple and you haven't really had anyone since come and raise to their level, or like J-Lo, Jennifer Aniston, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, etc. All of these people, you really can't find a likely match for them in the younger generations like Generation Z or Generation Y or Millennials. Of course, there's a few young establishment people that they let every now and then rise, but overall, people are still fanning out over these middle-aged and older women like they are 20-year-old women same with these men. And I find it kind of weird when I think about it. Older people these days are remaining stationary. And we know there's a lot of occultism involved in Hollywood. Younger people, just everyday younger people are getting sicker. You're finding cancer in younger people like teenagers, leukemia. Also, erectile dysfunction is an issue that younger men are facing, men in their 20s and even in their late teens. And a lot of people could blame cancer on the carcinogenics in food, obesity, a lack of exercise, an improper diet, or you know exposure to certain things. People could also blame the erectile dysfunction on pornography, masturbation, and such. But all of these mediums are still a way of feeding on the energy of the youth. One thing I, to connect this all together is I've realized that a lot of times I've talked about on social media how privacy is power and you don't want to necessarily give your entire life away to strangers because you don't really know what they're imagining against you. 
But I also think that they have younger people hooked on like these apps and these platforms because they're putting all of their energy into it. And there are people on the other end feeding off of the energy of the youth. A lot of people talk about people taking the blood of a baby or of a young virgin and using it for eternal youth. I think about a study that was done in 2014 by Stanford University led by neuroscientist Tony Wise Carre, who showed that infusions of blood from young mice revealed cognitive and neurological impairments seen in old ones. They used a somewhat bizarre technique in which two mice were sutured together in such as a way they shared a circulatory system known as parobiasis and found old mice to join to their youthful counterparts showed changes in gene activity in, in the brain region called the hippocampus as well as increased neural connections and enhanced synaptic plasticity, a mechanism believed to underlie learning and memory in which the strength of neural connections change in response to experience. They also gave old mice infusions of young blood plasma, the liquid component of blood containing proteins and hormones, but no cells, which significantly improved their performance in learning and memory tests. So it's proven scientifically through testing it in mice that the blood of the young does have a benefit to that of the older. And so there's even been talks of what if they were to take like baby's blood in a vial so people could stay young or so they could have better health. We see this even with the stem cells of aborted fetuses that are sometimes used in research or in vaccinations. So we know that the uh, blood, the stills of the young, the youthful, is a valuable commodity. But I also believe the energy of the youthful is a valuable commodity. And I think about, you know, a lot of people have heard the story of Elizabeth Bathory, the wealthy, powerful Hungarian noblewoman who was a serial killer. And she also bathed in the blood of young virgin women who she killed and tortured in various ways. So we know this has been going on since the beginning of time. And whether people are really taking blood or not, it's a matter of now, I feel like, feeding of energy off of the youth. And this is why the youth is always the target, because they are the future. They are going to shape policy. They are going to shape the way society goes. But also, there's a um, desperation to live forever, to stay young. And some people are deciding that one way to do it is to feed off of their energy. And I think that's what we're seeing more of. And I think there's almost a transference of the energy and health of the younger going to the older. And I know this is kind of like a wild theory, but this is something I believe has happened. And this is something I can safely say when I was a lot younger, like 22 years old, I hit a point in life where I felt like for my age, I didn't feel like I was the healthiest. I can remember being about 19 and I started to experience some issues. And up until I was about 23 years old, I felt like I didn't take my life back. At that point in time, that's when I did the sign someone had text you and how to end it video. I uh, had been working out. I had been trying to eat healthier and such. And I feel better now at 26 than I did at 22 because for one thing, I began to spiritually combat this as well as I had to have a more regimented life. I um, have experimented with eating healthier, even with plant-based eating at times. I still eat meat from time to time, but I also, you know, started taking on more natural forms of exercising outside of the gym. Like whenever I lived in California or Virginia or Texas, I took walks, I hiked, I swam in the ocean. But all of these things didn't feel possible when I was younger and I was suffering. But I was a healthy teenager. I was a healthy early 20 something, but I was experiencing these things. But after I did that video and a lot of you guys prayed for me, I saw full recovery. So what I'm saying is that we just have to be mindful that although we live in a physical world and although I am saying, you know, you should do everything in power to keep your mind, body, spirit healthy, you also have to realize that there are those out there who, for whatever reason, are going to want to feed on your energy spiritually. And you must always be ready to just, I would say, daily prayer and just including that in your daily prayer helps. I and mean, even of your loved ones as well, because there are people after it and a lot of people in, who are superstitious will talk about the evil eye, like the gaze of someone who's envious or hates you could create chaos. So some people have that superstitious idea of wearing like a red string around their wrist. But a lot of that does hold some bearings of truth when it comes to 
people can cause harm by gazing at you hatefully because maybe you're having a rough day and then that one bad stare also puts you in an even worse mood. Or maybe it makes you feel more insecure or uneasy. But even if you can't see it online, there are people with that same energy directing it at you. I like the way um, someone put it before. If you had 500 friends on Facebook and you post a nice picture, you're going to have a lot of people, even if they don't like it or comment, they may send positive energy your way. But if you have people who don't like it or for whatever reason want to be negative, they're sending negative energy your way. So that's why it's so important that we are always mindful of how we present ourselves in person and online because we have no control over how people will react to us. But also that, again, we just continue to keep that as part of our prayer and to be mindful of it. But privacy is power, I would say. And I'd like to know what you guys' thoughts are on this. Sorry if it was a bit scrambled. <laughs> I tried to outline my thoughts, but I kind of went off script because I was thinking about all of this and it's been on my mind. I hope you all have a wonderful rest